Hello everyone, and welcome all. I am your host, Caesar, and this is Transformers Energon Supreme Class Optimus Prime. So, we would take a look at the packaging, if I still had the official packaging, but unfortunately I don't, yet I do have the collector's card that it did come with. As you can see, nice piece of artwork of Optimus Prime there, very heroic pose, ready to punch some Decepticons, and on the back we can see his tech specs. And he has tens across the board for everything. So there is that. And as for Optimus Prime himself, we can see here that he is a semi truck, as most incarnations of him tend to be, with a red and a very dark blue, somewhat black color scheme this iteration of him has. He has a trapezoidal shaped trailer, which is very unaerodynamic, but still very cool looking nonetheless. As for Optimus Prime himself, you can see he his gun just pegs into the back of the semi truck mode here for storage. So we'll just put that off to the side for now. And he's a very interesting semi truck. Kind of like some sort of like future Earth Cybertronian flat nosed semi truck here. And as we can see, nice big windows at the front, four headlights, a grill there. Looks very, very nice, somewhat menacing there. And on the side here, not a lot to talk about. He has a window here. There's a little mock door pole there. Um, his arms are just kind of hanging out here, which looks really weird. Um, but... I could, you could suppose that those are like some sort of roll cage or extension of the truck itself. Nice silver paint here on the, um, the fuel tanks themselves, as well as that silver paint also in the rims, although it's kind of more of a sort of gunmetal shade of silver rather than just like a pure silver. On the side here, he has a Minicon port as the Minicon uh, gimmick slash power-up carried over from Transformers Armada to Transformers Energon. And as for the Energon gimmick itself, here he has a port for an Energon star for the new power-up method that was developed in the show. At the back, not a whole lot to talk about. His gun store is there. Uh, the post on the gun pegs in here, and then it has these two rails that the gun just sits in. This front rail here is where the bottom of the gun barrel there just clips in to rest in place so that way it's not wiggling about. And at the back here is where the trailer plugs in. And then on the other side it's more or less the same, except a nice big red Autobot symbol at the top there. And at the top itself we just have this um, kind of helmet piece for his uh, robot mode when it's powered up. So it just kind of folds over there and sort of forms the top of the truck and it just hides his head from inside of the truck itself. So there's his truck mode. And putting him off to the side, we'll take a look at the trailer. And so the trailer just has the fold-out piece here, which goes into the truck hitch on or the trailer hitch on the truck itself. And that can just fold away there, so you get a nice flat surface here if you just want to pose the trailer by itself in any way. Um, very nice coloring here, a lot of great molded detail in here. You could see like vents and tubes and hoses and that kind of stuff all throughout here. There's a nice paint up here due to the lighting. Um, the camera is kind of picking up it as a more gold color, but it's a fairly dull kind of earthish bronze color uh, to the naked eye. And it has mini con ports on here as well. And here we can see a slider. I'll show what the gimmick there is in a moment. The same wheels as on the truck with the same rims and the same colors there. Nice big black panel with this nice molded detail here, kind of like a, a compass shape, which is really interesting. And then it has these here, and these are pretty cool. Uh, you could probably imagine that these might be some sort of uh, exhaust pipes, although I don't know why a semi-trailer would have exhaust pipes versus the truck. Nice big Autobot symbol there, not hiding from any Decepticons at all. And then at the top we have this sort of antenna piece radar dish or whatever 
And you can kind of pose this however you like. If you'd like it kind of out like this, maybe you just want to fold it up entirely. Maybe fold it down, cover the Autobot symbol somewhat. Now yeah, the Autobot symbol has sunglasses. Um, or you could kind of kind of fold, and this piece at the top moves, so you can kind of fold that around, move it there. Um, if you want to do that, and this actually is nice because if you have a bunch of mini cons, you can just have them resting on the top here while the trucks are rolling around, and they're they're not going to slide off the back. So it kind of you know it has multiple functions there. Although I do believe it's supposed to be some sort of antenna or radar. And then on the other side, we have more or less the same, except we're not ha we don't have that big black panel at the back. It's just a nice open slot here. Showing off the inside there, and then at the top, if we lay it down, we can see we have four panels here. This one is a faux panel. This does not open. That's why this panel is here. And we see here that it says OP1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. And there's some other good molded detail in there, like a little kind of track rail thing. Looks very, uh, you know, very futuristic, kind of sci-fi stuff. And so there's the trailer. As for the trailer, it also does serve as a command base for all the units within it. And all, to, all that you have to do is just lay it on the big flat side. And then on the back here, you come and you just pull out this piece. And then that props it up. And in this piece, you have some more nice molded detail. Nice big kind of plate there. Um, you have some vents up here. Uh, you know, just really, really nice molded detail just all throughout it. And then you can stand up the trailer and it serves as a base. And now how the trailer functions is that these little sliders on the side, you just push it forward. It'll pop open the panels. And then you can launch out the prime force from the trailer and so you can just slide those back in launch it back out and do that multiple times so it's really really quite playable there and on this side if you pull the exhaust pipe looking piece down then that allows you to open up this plate and then you see one of the prime force is a helicopter so you can just set the helicopter there and have it as a helipad which is really rather neat and kind of ingenious on the Hasbro's part when designing the toy. So there we have that. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the Prime Force. Get them all out here. And then we'll set this trailer off to the side. And so here we have the Prime Force itself. And it's very nice. Nice, bright, colorful team here. Very cool. So here we have Fire One, a little orange fire engine. Not something you see every day, but I definitely do like it as orange is my favorite color. So here we have him, nice white piece in the middle here, and lots of nice molded detail on these as well. Nice, you know like hoses and whatnot and stuff for the fire engine, you know, control panels. Um, and then it says OP1 on the side there. It's being Optimus Prime, component one of the Prime Force. And on the same, on the opposite side, you have the same molded detail there. And then the cab, it also has like kind of little water hoses or signal lights on the side of the cab here. It has a rotating water cannon at the top, so you can rotate that however you like. And then the ladder, you can pull up, and you can extend it, so that way you have your rescue ladder, and it also has some nubs up here, which can serve as a water cannon. Um, you know, however you want to envision that those work. So there we have Fire 1. Now we have Copter 2 here, and this is how it's folded up to fit in the trailer, but you can go ahead and just lift up the blades from where they rest in the notch here. Pull those out so that way you have your helicopter blades splayed out and then pull this piece out and there you have your tail with uh, your stabilizer. This is a very nice looking helicopter. Blades do spin. Uh, on mine it's a little snug but that's not a problem at all. And as you can see this one has a lot of nice molded detail in here. Very nice paint. You know that black goes all the way down highlighting the cockpit and all those windows. Um, and It kind of has skids here. For where the helicopter would land, but it does have wheels on the bottom, so it does roll, much like uh, the rest of these, they all roll. And so, so we have Copter 2 there, and Digger 3, 
we have here and it's a drill tank uh, you know some sort of big drilling device so nice paint work here on the front and black all the way through where uh, you can imagine that this would have been drilling and getting real hot which would have just you know burned that metal on the front there drig dil uh, digging into the earth and as we can see here there's a nice kind of like copperish bronzish color there for the uh, cockpit there for the little control area and uh, black here on the insides of the treads there although the treads themselves are just molded in that plastic that same the same uh, kind of dirt tan plastic there and this does have wheels on the bottom and this wheel it's actually geared and it has a little rubber ring on it so that way it can grip so that way as it rolls on the ground it'll actually grip the ground engaging that gear and moving the drill so you can move that drill while you roll it back and forth which is really cool nice play feature there and you know looks really cool and so here is the last one of the Prime Force. This is Submarine 4, I believe it was called in the show. And uh, it's, a, it's a very navy blue submarine, but it might be picking up as a much brighter, kind of like aqua blue on the camera. Um, but it's very nice, nice molded detail. Some silver down here, you know, for the paint. Uh, some black up there with the OP-4. Got these turbines here, you know, which you would imagine that would power the submarine itself as it's, you know, going through the water. Nice white markings here on the front. And then uh, you got some prongs here. And then a nice conning tower up here. Looks very cool. Nice molded detail. There's all kinds of little windows in there. So it's very cool. And then you have these on the side, which looks like torpedoes there. You can imagine that those would be launching from the sub as subs tend to do and then nice silver paint here and it's the same silver paint that is on Optimus Prime himself so it's really cool and there we go and all these just have a big gap in the back so that way they can combine with Optimus so there's all those guys and they're they're really cool and then of course you can bring back in the trailer and have it as a display base set up with all of these guys so very very nice nicely done there so let's go ahead and move these off to the side and we'll take a look at Optimus Prime himself and get him transformed into robot mode and see how he looks there so moving these off, we'll bring back Prime and go ahead and just raise the camera up a little bit here and so here we go so the first step to transforming Optimus Prime is just go ahead grab the arms and pull them out to the side like this and you may and then you can rotate and adjust uh, bring the arm down and then using the white pad on the side here you can just hit push that and that'll be and that works the slider uh, which brings his hands out and then just repeat that on the other side so that way he has both of his arms now and then what we want to do is we want to come to the bottom and his legs are just under here and it's just really easy if you grab the fuel tank on the side and then you can just rotate that leg up and then his feet you just want to bring down the toe and the heel piece from from the front and the back of the leg they just rotate downwards and then you bring out the other leg and repeat the process here so that way he has two legs and now we have the back of the truck just kind of sticking out here so it's going to accordion in just fold up there and fold down at that hinge so now we can get him standing here and then this uh, helmet piece you just kind of want to bring back position however you like I just uh, tend to tend to bring it straight back like this and then his head's just in here and there's a little tab on the back of it so that we can grab it lift it up and there's his head and so that's the transformation complete very very simple very easy but very effective being able to get a uh, semi truck into a robot and he looks pretty cool in robot mode here. Um, of course, the tires on his side and the big wheel arches here and the big bumper and stuff give him a, a very big proportions there, uh, making him look rather fat. Um, as much of the community has called, come to know him as the Fat Optimus Prime. Um, 
but as you you know as you can see here he does look like Optimus Prime for the most part he's got his the nice head the nice iconic head crest there with the silver in the middle and then he's got the little like ear antennas on the side there um, nice silver mouth plate there and he has yellow eyes which is rather odd for Optimus but there you go and you see that big Autobot symbol again just becomes the front of his shoulder due to the way the arm rotates off the back and then there's an Autobot symbol in here where that Energon star would plug over and there's a lot of molded detail in there too which is real nice nice Nice, uh, you know, kind of circuitry looking mechanical detail in there. And then his big chest with the windows, much like his uh, G1 version. Still really cool look for him. And then uh, his abdomen is the, uh, the grill there of the truck as well as the, you know, the kind of bumper and the headlights there. Um, with some really wide hip pieces here with the tires. Um... His arms are just red, and then the fists are, you know, kind of like a really dark blue. Um, this blue on him is much darker than the navy blue on the on the submarine. Um, the camera doesn't pick it up well, but it's it's still much darker. Um, and uh, there's some some blue up here on his knee, and then down going down the shin here, and then he just has gray feet. Um, and going up the back, not a whole lot. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty standard, just the back of the truck folds up there and you kind of have the helmet piece hanging out here. Then there's a little bit of blue up in here. And so, you know, that's, that's what we got. And not a whole lot to talk about in robot mode, because most of the details just carry over from the vehicle mode. So there he is. As far as his size goes, Optimus Prime stands at the top of his head at roughly 7 inches or just about 17 and a half centimeters um, and as far as a weight I'll bring in our scale I'll get a sense of just how big he really is and He comes up to 288 grams. Or 10 and a quarter ounces. So, not, not too big, not too heavy, but certainly a good size. And, you know, he does have a little bit of heft and bulk to him, but definitely not something that would be uncomfortable for a, ch a child to be carrying around and playing with. So we'll set that aside there, and we'll move on here. So for the robot mode, as far as the articulation goes, uh, his head can not look up at all due to the way it transforms, but he can look all the way down into his own chest. Uh, and then his head could do a full 360, but the, uh, the hinge in the back here that the helmet piece is on kind of gets in the way, so... You know, you get a good amount of left and right movement there, but you don't really need a whole lot. Um, anyway, and then this piece, the helmet piece, you can pose however you like. You can just kind of fold it all the way back, kind of hide it away, or just leave it up. Um, the artwork does have it, you know, up like this, so I just, I just do it like that. Uh, the arms, they can do a full 360 on a ratchet joint there in and out on another ratchet so nice nice solid arm joints here and then the elbow can bend um, about 45 degrees there before you know before uh, things start getting in the way um, so you get a little bit of elbow there again on a ratchet joint and this is a fairly stiff elbow too so you know, kind of get two hands on there to move it around uh, nothing at the fists. They can push up into the arm on the slider, but that's for transformation. Um, he does not have a waist or an ab joint at all. Um, but as far as the legs go, they can go forward. One click on the ratchet back. Two clicks on the ratchet there. 
Um, they can go outwards and these tires do move out uh, to help accommodate that movement there so that way you can get them out a little bit there. Not really going to be kicking anybody in the face for sure but you know get some posability there. He does have a knee joint down here actually. Um, so just about where you, where you would expect a knee joint to be, you know, in there. And then his feet, they can move, you can move the toes up and down, the heel can move up and down, so you can manipulate that a little bit to get him into some poses. But he's not going to be really capable of doing much poses because of all the bulk at the top here. You know, he's fairly top heavy, so you can't have him doing ballerina poses, really. Um... So I accidentally hit the button there, and that's for a sound effect that he has. There is a there is a soundboard in there, and there's a speaker located right here in the uh, in the grill there of the truck. That's where the sounds come out. And he has a couple buttons on him. One is the fake door pull on his left side here. And there's actually another button back here, and there's a switch so you can select which sound you'd like. And there's a 1, 2, 3, and 4, and those sounds actually all correspond to one of the members of the Prime Force. So, we'll go ahead and show that off now. And so, if we hit the slider, uh, if we select the slider to 1, and then the button is actually this middle piece here. So, right there. And as you can hear... That sound is kind of like the horn of a uh, of a fire truck that's headed to the rescue. And so if we move it to the second slot, and it's a somewhat kind of helicopter sound, like the blades are rotating um, and spinning around as the helicopter is flying. So it somewhat mimics there. The third one is for Digger Three here. And it kind of sounds like rock being, you know, drilled out from a, you know, from a wall, from, from some hole uh, in the earth there, a big cave or something. It just sounds like a drilling noise. And then if we go to four. My personal favorite sound, it, you know, kind of like that sonar ping that you would uh, get from a submarine. Uh, underwater as it's trying to detect enemy ships or just find its way around the uh, terrain underwater. So there we have those four sound effects. And then the other button on his side uh, does another sound effect and it actually has a light up feature which I'll show off. Um, but that's for a super mode. And to get Optimus into a super mode all that we have to do is push the hands in to the body or back up into the arms rather and pull the arms completely outwards so that way he's standing like this and then for his feet we just need to fold up the toe and heel pieces so that way we get his foot back into this configuration and then the last piece is just to put the helmet piece over his head so it kind of and then just bring the sides down bring up the ear pieces so that's what his head looks like now. Of course, it just looks like he's wearing an oversized hat, but, um, you know, it does, it's a fairly cheap uh, way to, you know, get a much bigger looking head for the super mode, otherwise, because his regular head would just look way too small. So, for the super mode, uh, we take the prime force here. And the Prime Force becomes the components of the Super Mode. And so each member of the Prime Force actually has two modes. So they can become either an arm or a leg for the Super Mode. So for any of them to achieve the arm mode, you're just going to want to rotate, rotate it down at this hinge in here. So just take the cab section, just rotate that down. And then... For fire one here, you're just going to go ahead and open up the cab panels, rotate those to the side, and then you take the front windshield and you just kind of fold that down. So there we go, that's that's fire one, get in into the arm mode. And copter two is the same, we just want to rotate the tail stabilizer, fold up the blades, and we just want to just collapse that all back to how you would if you were storing it in the trailer. 
Um, actually, you'd wanna, you want to have the blades off to the side so that way you can rotate this upwards and then you can stick the blades back up or you know rotate them down however you like to position those. And then this works the same where you just open up the cockpit pieces here. Just fold those to the side and then fold the front of it sideways like that and there you have a fist in there. Um, so these are the only, so Copter 1, I mean Copter 2 and Fire 1 are the only ones with uh, fists built into them, you know, like molded hands. Uh, for the arm mode for Digger, you just want to pull up the uh, little cockpit section there for the drill tank. And then you just want to bring all this down and then you can fold this up onto the side uh, like that. Or however you'd like to just, you know, get it out of the way. You can do, you know, have a shoulder spike for Optimus or whatever you'd like. And then this is the arm mode, and so his hand becomes the digger uh, drill bit there. So that's him in arm mode, and then for arm mode on him, you just do the same for the submarine. You just fold that up, uh, so that way you have it like this. And this is the arm mode, and then you have this claw underneath here, and that claw becomes the hand for Optimus. So this one has a hand, but it's not like a molded fist, it's just a claw. So there you go. So, so you have all of the Prime Force in its arm configurations. And then for the leg configuration, what you'll want to do is you'll want to just get them back into, into their vehicle mode. And then you just want to grab the cab here, and the cab is going to break off on this separate hinge and then the cabin will become the foot and then this folds up at the hinge in here so that way it, it folds up there there's the hinges back in here and then it becomes a leg there and then the fist here just serves as a heel support but even then it's still a nice sturdy foot and then for copter you're gonna do the same thing if you want him in the foot configuration just fold it back up and then you'll this one you'll actually want to move the blades all the way back and have them hooked into the tab there so that way the blades will sit in that notch along there without breaking anything and then for digger it's the same process you just want to make sure that you have this cockpit piece untabbed and this one can be a little stiff um, are, it can be a little hard because you're trying to grab over here, but these treads don't actually move. It's just the middle drill piece that moves. So you move that like that, the cockpit just kind of rests there, and then these become the heels. So that's him and leg configuration. And then for the submarine, you just go ahead and flip up the front piece there, and that's its foot slash leg configuration there. So there we have all them and their foot configuration. So you can mix and match and choose what you want to do. Me personally, I take Submarine and the Digger, and I just use these as the feet, and you'll just take take one of Optimus's legs and just slide it down into that hole there, and it'll lock in securely. And so there we have his feet, and we come back up here. And really quickly, just transferring Fire 1 and Copter 2 back into their arm modes. Take that, and then the hole just slips over the arm, and it locks into the end of the shoulder here. And then that becomes the arm there. And then Copter 2 works the same way, where you just move it back into the arm configuration. Bring it in, and it locks on. And there we have Transformers Energon Optimus Prime in his super mode combined with his Prime Force. And now the last step is just to open the wind windows here and just flay those out to the sides so that way you can see the middle here. And in the middle here it actually reveals some nice molded details inside of his chest there. And as you can see, there's some nice yellow there, you know, nice kind of handle-looking thing, which is kind of reminiscent of the Matrix of Leadership. Um, 
but this is actually supposed to represent the spark of combination which allows him to combine with the prime force and become the super mode uh, in the show and you can either pre and then once you press this button on the side you can either press it with your finger or you can open the windshield and press the windshield in and it'll make that blasting noise and then the light in there lights up a nice bright red so the kids can annoy their parents with that sound if they'd like to and so there you go there there's Optimus in his super mode combined with the Prime Force and it looks really cool and, and then you can go ahead and take the gun and just peg that into either of his fists and now he's armed and ready to fight some Decepticons which he looks really cool like this and I like it a lot you know it's really fun really playable and uh, you know you can have him in his regular robot mode and then have him power up into his super mode here and there you go and so as for his super mode his height increases from roughly 7 inches to uh, 9 inches, or approximately 22 and a half centimeters. So, there you have that. And then, as for a weight on his super mode, how much mass he gains from the Prime Force being attached to him, brings him up to uh, 549 grams or 1.3 and 3 eighths ounces which is pretty good size there and definitely a nice heft to the figure itself so there we have that um, as for the super mode, the articulation is the same. The shoulders can do a full 360. Um, and then at this joint down here, inside of the arm, they can actually move, you know, in and out. And that's that's just on a swivel hinge. It's not any uh, ratchet joint. Um, but there is a ratchet in the elbow, except it's on, you know, it's still limited to only about 45 degrees of bend there. And then the legs, it's still the same forward and backward movement because it's still that same hinge um, and these don't really hinder the knee articulation you still get about the same knee bend um, from the from the knee there um, as you would from the from the regular but the regular robot leg you know you can get a little bit more but you still get a fairly decent knee bend with the uh, with any of the prime force members attached in the super mode so there you have that as far as the articulation goes and I think that just about covers everything for the robot mode, as well as his super mode. So let's get him transformed back into his vehicle mode. It's fairly simple and straightforward. So we'll just want to go ahead and detach all the uh, members of the Prime Force and set them off to the side. And from here, what we're going to do is we're just going to fold out the back of the truck fold the legs up back in under there so that way they lay there bring the arms back just fold them away there and then the head just rotate rotate in there and as far as the helmet piece goes you can orient this uh, many different ways what I tend to do is I just rotate the ear pieces uh, kind of back so that way they're sitting back and then I just kind of rotate this up and just sort of bring it down like that so that way it sits like this um, over the top of the cab there hiding his head and you know you can kinda kinda push it down a little bit to help you know help it help it sit a little bit closer and then you can also work with that that hinge in the back there and get that and in, get it into a good orientation that you'd like so there's his truck back in his vehicle mode and then of course you can just take the trailer 
and just reattach it and the hinge piece down here you kind of just want to get a tool and pull that open so that way you can pull that out and have your have your tab so that way you can hook it back into the trailer hitch and there you go and of course I haven't put the prime force back in the trailer yet but there he sits and as for the length of the vehicle mode the semi truck with the trailer attached is roughly 15 inches or about 38 centimeters and then the truck itself from from the back to the front is about six and a half uh, well six and a quarter or about 16 centimeters um, in total length there so it's a fairly decently sized uh, semi truck and trailer combined and then the semi truck itself is still not bad of course the trailer is just massive compared to Optimus himself as far as this set goes I think it's you know really cool really fun to play with and mess with um, you know it still holds up now I've had it for a long time so you know the joints are still tight um, you know all the all the connections for, like the gun pegging into the hand you know all for, for the Prime Force plugging in, you know, all those joints are still nice and tight even after all the time that I've had the figure itself. Um, so, you know, it still holds up really well. It's really fun playable and, you know, if you have a kid and they, you know, this is a nice solid toy to get for them. Of course, the uh, the only issue is going to be losing the missile for most most cases because um, this is a very hair fire trigger. You barely touch that. It's just going to fly off and you could lose that very easily. Um, but otherwise, there's not many issues with the set, uh, you know, the other thing is just making sure that when you're transforming you have these helicopter blades out of the way otherwise you might snap one off um, other than that there's not really any any major issues uh, it's cool that it comes with a trailer so you have a full Optimus and trailer there and then the trailer can store the prime force so if you just wanna you know put everything away on a shelf or in a drawer somewhere and just get it tucked out of the way you know you have a nice convenient way to do that so that way everything can just compact nicely um, and uh, yeah otherwise I think it's a great set it's nice and fun to play with um, the the play features are all all here you know you have some lights you have some sounds you have a robot that transforms into a truck and back and then you have the extra pieces that attach to him as well as the trailer to you know so there's a lot of stuff to do here so it's a really fun set to play with and uh, definitely, uh, you know, kind of a must-have for any big fan of the uh, Transformers Energon TV show because, you know, this is one of those iconic things from the show where Optimus would power up into his super mode. So, um, as far as I go, in my personal opinion, because I've had this toy for a long time and I've messed with it and I've, I've just loved it since, I might be slightly biased, but I think it is, you know, it's definitely a must-buy you know, for kids, of course, it is a bit of an older set now, and it might be harder to get a hold of, and there's m many more cheaper uh, Transformers toy options for kids nowadays, but it's definitely real fun, and, uh, you know, it's great for the collectors, too, if they want to just have that complete set of all the figures from a certain TV show or toy line, so it's really cool. Other than that, um, there's not much else to talk about. So, this has been a look at Transformers Energon Supreme Class Optimus Prime. Links are in the description if you're interested in checking out more about this item or finding other videos from me. So, till next time, this has been Caesar reminding you you're never too old for toys. Logging off.